Welcome back, guys, to episode number 28 now of the Look Mum, I'm Hustling podcast. Have you been hustling this week? We have. We've been hustling all week long and today as well. We've already filmed a video. Archie's been dropped off at daycare. Like <laughs> yeah. we've... All right, it's been it's been a pretty full on week. Like I'm back at work this week as well. Just had two weeks off before that, mm. and I picked a good week to come back in retail. It is Black Friday week, Black Friday. and then yeah. Cyber is Cyber Monday as big? Is it got the same size sales? I think it's not as big, but it's huge for like Amazon and places like that. With a whole Black Friday thing, it's only just in the last maybe three or four years it started to really catch momentum here in Australia was huge in America. Like it was more of an American thing. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of slowly transitioned over here into the shopping world of Australia. Hmm. Interesting concept. It is. Yeah. Isn't it to get them out of the the red for the year? Because most companies are running like super low profit and it's just the way to like clear it out. I think I read that somewhere. It's a way to clear out old stock and to get back into the black before the end of the end of year. But that could be a whole different thing. It could be I don't know. I always thought that's what to something else. Boxing Day was for, especially in Australia, like a last ditch effort. But like Q Q four in the retail world is, it's like November, December, January. No, oh, what would no. it be January? That's summer. You're talking about summer. Oh, <laughs> Q four is like October, November, December. Right. Yeah. So it would have to be. It would make more sense that for Australia would be like the Boxing Day would be the last ditch effort because that's when all the big sales used to be on. But then in the last like two years. Because of the them pushing Black Friday a little bit more now, it's now they've got like two days per year, extra day. Yeah. Now they're going to need one, at part of the a third of the way through the year because there's two back to back. They're like Black Friday and mm. Christmas or mm-hmm. Boxing Day. Yeah. Are like a month apart, so they're going to need something. Surely, April May ish. Well, that they can have another gigantic sale, like a post Easter sale or something. Well. It's so funny in the in the retail world as well. So you got Mother's Day around then, and that's like a huge day for shopping because everyone loves to buy their mother's gifts. I mean, you know, we are look moms, so you know, we always like to buy our mother's gifts as well. But that was yep. like another huge day for like shopping in general, like just people spending up money. And then you've got like tax time as well. A lot of retailers would have like the end of tax time sales. True. So how was your hmm. two weeks off? It was good. Very did, did a lot of work with you. We did. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff for ebay um we did a lot of like content planning and stuff which was really nice um yeah just re sort of focusing and just making sure that the next couple of months just go better and smoother but the way that we sort of do things is just constantly evolving and just revising and just making sure that we're like i guess staying fresh but also trying to maintain that level of like happiness doing it as well rather than not getting like caught up or thinking too much about it just trying to really enjoy the process mm. and that's what the the two weeks we really use that just to sort of look at things retrospectively and just be like what's what actually makes us happy like what do we enjoy doing what's going to be easy to film yeah it was quite quite a useful two weeks and then we Speaking just like fresh yeah oh you got a nice fresh haircut as well i wouldn't say it's a haircut it's just a shaved head because mm. i'm lazy yeah, well, it's a nice, simple look. Always Is it? looks good. Yeah. It's simple, right? Yeah. It's hard. Like, all my hats look fit weird, though, when I can shave my head, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe I should grow, them, grow my hair out long again, like Y2K emo days. Oh, yeah. Because you used to have, like, the shoulder length hair, right? Mm-hmm. I remember you showed me when we first started dating your license, and I thought your hair was just, like, frizzy and all over the place, but it was just, like, in a messy ponytail. It used to be heaps curly. Like, yeah. not heaps curly, but, like, quite wavy and. Not really well kept or together. And yeah. You just have to straighten it quite a bit. So, straighten it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you do like the head banging and stuff and then had to like uh, uh, get all the knots out of your hair? Head banging? Yeah. For like, the knots? No. So like, you know, with the long hair and the emos, did you go to like gigs and stuff and like head bang? No, I yeah. was never really a head banger. I was more of a stand cross-armed, cross-armored guy, type of guy. Was it because you were so tall and you just, like, felt weird, so you just, like, stood at the back behind everybody? I was never really, like, a circle pit or a, a mosher. Like, a few times for a few bands, but more of a sit at the back, just enjoy it type of- From a distance? Type of dude, yeah. Yeah. I think in my early emo days, I was very, like, within the mosh pit, trying to, like, you know, just dance around, get sweaty. But as I got older, I was just like, I I can't do that anymore. I just want to- Because you can't pay attention. Like, you get caught up with, like, well, the people around you. you can't pay attention to the band, no, or mm. the music or the show. You're, yeah. You're worried about, is this guy in front of me going to, like, duck down because, fuck, he's tall. Mm-hmm. Um, am I going to lose my shoe? Have I already lost my shoe? Where is my shoe? Yeah. Um, I'm sure for females, probably a lot of groping involved and stuff, which is not, not nice to think about, but I'm sure exists. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, not not fun. You can uh, enjoy it way more from the back of the room. Yeah, I think as I got older, and I guess as the concert tickets got more expensive, I was like, I need to like make sure I get more bang for my buck, so actually pay attention to the band playing. Not big on the sit down ones, though. The mega stadium ones. Like no. I'd rather stand in general general admission at the back than yeah. go and sit sit in a seat for two hours. Because you want to be able to like I don't know like tap your foot or just like you know do a, a bit big, of a boogie. I'm a big foot tapper. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be able to like move your body a bit with with the music, but yeah, I just remember a little, little sway, little head nod, doozy do, yeah, little dancing, doozy do, doozy do. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just made up a whole dance. I doozy did do, doozy do, and the doozy do is by a jury do. Yeah, so many, so many gigs back then, and it's like coming back to work now. I'm just seeing so many more kids, and I say kids like I'm old but I'm not like we're 33 but just wearing exactly what I used to wear and then seeing those clothes readily available in the retail stores when I used to have to like hunt around for skinny jeans you never could get them anywhere I remember like all my guys friends used to have to buy women's jeans to Mm. get skinny jeans yeah I used to buy stovepipes Mm. lee stovepipes from general pants but yeah there's so many shops now like in terms of like fast fashion Mm. you go to like any shopping center of, of decent size and you're going to find, I don't know, what do they have? City Beach and General Pants and then Factory. Platypus and Factory. You've and- got like Cotton On, which is a huge one, JJ's, like yeah. all those places that have- And they're all selling very similar stuff. But in terms of access to like different products, mm-hmm. way more than what, what we used to have. Like back in my day, we used to have Best and Less, SDS, if oh, you're yeah. like lucky. SDS, yep. Maybe uh, an independent skate shop within 30-minute drive. You could get something cool like an Attica shirt or something like that. But really, there was not much else. Then General Pants came around a little bit later. We can get like mm-hmm. better quality stuff, but there wasn't that much around. But there's way more available now, and it's not exactly cheap. So everything is like, still as expensive as it used to be, if not more. But there's like way more access, way more brands. But you f- I feel like there'd be narrowed down now over time because like brands competition cut out the the lesser competitors and stuff like that but now there's like yeah i just named like eight retail stores that all hold whatever 50 brands in in them each yeah and they're all like 80 dollars for a shirt yeah well you do have and i think again like with women's clothes they're just heaps more accessible but you have like the high medium like low tier way more of a range yeah so on your low tier you've got your you know yeah, your best and less, your big W, like your JJs and your cotton ons, they're like pretty low tier. Then you've got like your mid range, which is the, you know, your your factory, your, yeah. Suzanne? Yeah, Suzanne, why not? No, they're a little bit more for the, the mums and dads out there. Hmm. Or just the mums. I think it's just women's clothes. Um, but then you've got your more expensive ones, which we're talking about with like general pants. They hmm. were like, if you had money, you would go to general pants. If you didn't, you'd go to JJ's. Yeah. JJ's, no no the biggest fan. Yeah. But online, it was back in the day, it was just like a hot topic. And even then, it was like pretty, like lousy quality stuff. Mm-hmm. If you're into band stuff, you can use like, I used to use, I think it was all merch and like merchnow.com, but like band stuff. But yeah, harder to get, I guess, is the main point compared to what you can do now. But yeah, it is what it is. I'm sure a lot of those things are still available online that we used to get. Mm hmm. But now it's just, yeah, way too much. And it's just the, the mall mentality. I feel like it's different. Like back, we used to have Thursday night, late night shopping and you go hang out at the mall. And the only things you could really do there was go to SDS, which was the coolest shop, loiter in the food court and then like get like a boost juice or something. Yeah. Like there was not much else to do. But now there's like way more stores. So like what like what are the Thursday, are the Thursday nights like? Is that still a thing? Well, no, yeah, Thursday night late shopping is definitely a thing. That's more of a New South Wales. I think Victoria is like Tuesday. Like each state has a different oh, late night shopping day. Fair enough. Um, uh, but your your experience would have been very different to mine because for shopping for guys' clothes, you're more limited. So after school, yes, we did the food court loitering. I think that's a classic high school, you know, thing to do. Um, yes to the boost juice as well. I used to get the mango magic was my uh boost juice order very all tasty. the time. Yeah, very tasty. And then we'd go to I think for us being emo girls, we'd go to JJ's because we we're poor and that's all we could afford. Then we'd like go to Kmart, mm. have a look at some stationery, maybe go to like a Target. There'll be like a jewelry store that you can go to. Imagine going to Kmart for stationery. They got Schmiggle, Schmiggle, Schmiggle. 
so many options these days. Kmart, yeah, l- that's the lowest rung these days. Well, they used to be. Kmart never used to sell like fancy brands, but now they sell like actual proper brands, not like home brand Kmart stuff. Did you ever have a Kmart with a like a food outlet in it, like a r- little restaurant in it? No. We had a Kmart that had like a little restaurant in it. What? And it was like, this is like roughly around the time we could still like smoke indoors and stuff. Wow. So it was like a Kmart and like a food <laughs> little, because our next door neighbor um, like used to like take us there with her son and stuff every now mm-hmm. and then. And I'd just hang out with them for the day or whatever. And they'd go, we'd go to Kmart and there'd be like a little restaurant there and just get like a schnitzel and chips at like a tiny little like diner built into Kmart. And you just like smoke in there and stuff. Far out. <laughs> it was crazy. That's insane. Was this like regional Kmart or like Metro Kmart? This is down, uh, down around Wollongong Way. Right. So it might've yeah. been a regional Kmart. Makes sense. Not really regional. <laughs> it's a huge area now, but yeah. Yeah. Eat, smoking, smoking in shopping centers. That's crazy. A whole, whole different world. I know. The world has changed so much in the past. Well, like what, 20? How old have you been? Like five? Uh, a bit older, probably. Like 10? Probably closer to 10. Yeah, so like a good like 23, 20. Almost 25 years ago, yeah. Yeah, like it's changed so much. And even I think, especially with all like the environmental stuff going on at the moment, it's just changed even more or like it's escalated more in like the past like five years, just like how things are just like the approach to, to shopping and all that kind of thing, because it seems like it's almost going back to that, that stage. Like, so when we were younger, shopping and stuff wasn't like a huge thing. It was more of like food experiences outdoors. Was it? Yeah. Nah, I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Everyone's always wanted to spend money on fashion. Think about like every like decade. was the first thing you think of. If you see like a still image. Mm. Straight away is like the fashion. Yeah, that like, like yes, I know to a degree to your point, but it's also like what have what have people had to, what things have they been able to spend their money on over the decades, right? Like this decade is like you can like what can we spend money on? We have access to the internet. We can invest. We can buy. We can access and buy anything we want to: clothes, plants, food. If you find the right websites, drugs, whatever. Two mm-hmm. thousands. <laughs> Less so, like, probably, like, you know, whatever, 50% of what we can do now mm-hmm. as a random number, 90s, 80s, 70s, like, what do you have access to spend your money on? A lot of it would have just been, ha- like, for their house. Yeah. Like buying their house, like, paying for their house. But I feel like clothes has always been something that people have spent a lot of money on, obviously, depending on class and wealth and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I think, yeah, people have always been spending money on clothes, but it's the amount of clothes that people have now, though. Like it's changed. So it's, a turn, it's a turnover yeah. rate. Yeah. It's a turnover rate of new clothes. Yeah. So like, you know, most people would have a couple of suits, a couple of shirts, a couple of or like women would have like five shoes, a couple of dresses, and it'll last things them like a that. Decade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where you have now where I think I've got like six pairs of shoes and you think that's heats, but that's like that's not heats compared to like people that have like a whole room dedicated to like just shoes or just clothing. Yeah, the amount of clothes have gotten gotten heaps like in the past couple of years but i feel like now people are starting to switch more into that sustainability mindset like having that amount of clothes so people are starting to clear out declutter just yeah. not buying as much as they used to so i think we went through like a heavy period of like constant consumerism of quick like just needing to get the next item or whether it's more of a yeah filling that hole like just being able to shop because those clothes were more affordable rather than, you know, a car or putting it towards saving for a house or things like that. It makes total sense because, like, obviously the the amount of, like, clothes that go do- get donated and go to landfill and stuff like that is obviously you can just pull up any website or statistic and it's going to prove that, like... It's ridiculous. We're, we're, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but also everything else is becoming more expensive. Like, let's say compared to when we were... 15 to 18 like 20 like let's say 2005 right mm-hmm. like your 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 point is that we're consuming what was your point we're consuming like more frequently exactly like more more frequently and in more quantity so the, the price must have come down or something then because like everything now compared to 2005 is more expensive not like milk and bread but like things that we consider essential now are way more expensive like we're all spending $2000 on a phone every year or every 
say, let's say on average every two and a half years or two years, mm. spending two thousand dollars on a new iPhone, you not might not be paying for it up front, but over time you're paying for the cost of that phone. So like that's two thousand dollars less you have to spend on clothes or you, cars are more expensive or people buy cameras or they're spending more money on there's just more stuff more expensive stuff to spend money on now but it still seems like clothes are still getting bought at the same rate so it's like i don't know i don't don't know where the money's coming from well that sort of makes sense because when we when we go out because we go out thrifting quite a bit like we find those vintage clothes and they're still around but you get something from cotton on and it's like gone in yeah. a month like after a couple of washes so it's the quality of the product as opposed to the price or other other factors i guess yeah so it's maybe same, common, maybe common common clothes back then yeah right <laughs> maybe those clothes were more expensive back then because they were out of quality but again I, I don't with think the whole they're more expensive like i like, feel like everything's like relative in mm-hmm. terms of price change with inflation and stuff compared mm-hmm. like what we were paying for shirts and stuff yeah back then to what they are now i don't feel like it's gone up that much but it's the quality must have come down mm-hmm. which means you have to spend the same amount but more frequently same as like when these iphones are designed to have their batteries run out every so often it's mm-hmm. like built in ob- i think it's called built in obsolescence or something yeah it's built into everything basically it's gonna have a, a limited lifespan mm-hmm. um because they want you to Enter the economy again with a new purchase of two thousand dollars for a new laptop or eighty dollars for a new pair of headphones socks <laughs> oh, socks yeah but the but the whole idea towards clothing is just yeah it's completely different now just with how we just people just keep buying the amount even though they're still perfectly good. I think I was reading an article that Australia was like the second largest textile consumers within the world. Like Australia, we we don't have a huge population compared to some other countries, mm. but yeah, we're the second largest textile consumers. Well, I was reading today as well. We're like, I think we're the top um, single plastic use consumers as well. I'm not oh. maybe not the top, but like definitely like the top one, two, or three in terms of every country in the world. But one of the the highest, I guess, per capita, I guess is how they would measure it mm-hmm. uh, in terms of. We use the most single-use plastic bags and straws and stuff like that. And that's something like interesting in the news at the moment is New South Wales finally uh, is making a plan to ban the use of single plastic straws and stuff like that. I think it's like we're the last state to do it. But when you think about how much – like anytime you want to make a change in the in public sphere or community, like in mm-hmm. public health when I was studying at uni, like one of the main things you want to do is – have behavioral change yeah at the first you can put in implementation and education and stuff like that but it, it all comes down to like making behavioral changes in on a community level whether that's approaching people one-on-one creating a reason for them to change and it, then it impacts a larger community abroad right yeah. um oh, i always go into these rants and like <laughs> i shuffle too far along and then i forget what i'm talking about but like with it's sort of becoming widely accepted now that Single-use plastic bags from Woolworths and Coles, single-use straws. Mm-hmm. Um, there's better ways to um, make these products with more sustainable items and stuff. It's becoming more general knowledge. Every household knows, like, like try that- not to use too much plastics. Mm-hmm. But I don't think the conversation's there yet in terms of clothing and um, thinking about the circular economy and sustainability of clothing. The conversation's not there yet. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, we've been- Educated for the last 10 years about single-use plastics, mm-hmm. um, the importance. But, like, plastic straw is horrible. You see those videos about turtles and stuff with them stuck in their nose. Yeah, 100%. But there's no education at a broader level about sustainable clothing yet. So, that is that the new sort of frontier, perhaps? Next steps. Because I think, like you're saying, there is a firmer grasp on the understanding of the future effects of, like, what plastic can do. Mm-hmm. You see a lot more of you know, the big zone that's out in the ocean of just like covered in microplastics and small plastics. Every day you hear stories of, you know, fish found with stomachs full of plastic. Like it's definitely becoming a better known topic and you see that change, you know, so Woolies and Coles don't have like those single use plastic bags anymore. You have other companies that are, you know, try to be plastic free. You've got places where you can drop off plastic now. You've got places where they incentivize you to recycle and everything, which is awesome. So I think now everybody does have that firm grasp on plastic. They're now moving on to 
like the next thing that has the, the largest effect, which must be, it would have to be fast fashion because I'm just seeing it more and more and more now. Like we've been quite conscious of it for a while just because we're around it. We've been like thrifting with our parents since we were younger. Like we just know that or we just have a better understanding now and putting things in place to make sure that we don't contribute to that. Mm. But I definitely see it happening a lot more sooner, I think. It's all about, I guess, maybe clothing won't be the the next sort of push in terms of education about what's happening. Maybe it's something else that's um, close. Like, because the plastic thing is about single use. It's about how frequent they how frequently they're used, how frequently mm-hmm. they're turned over. With the clothing, you can you can keep it for a day, a week, a month, a year, ten years. Mm-hmm. So it might not be a priority in terms of there's other things that we turn over more frequently that are more important to address that have a larger impact. But in saying that, like fabrics and textiles is like I think number one or two in terms of global polluters, mm-hmm. um, along with like agriculture. Yeah. So it's definitely up there, and then transport's up there. Obviously, there's a lot of dispute in terms of which three are in, in which order. But that generally, yeah, textiles, agriculture, and transport are the three biggest contributors um, to, to environmental, environmental impacts. distress. Yeah. So, yeah, straws is one thing, plastic bags is one thing, but then it comes down to what do we do what do we dispose of more frequently than clothes? Because mm-hmm. then that should probably be addressed more. Clothing is important to you and I, but yeah. then. It's not not to everybody. Is coffee cups making a bigger issue than shirts? But it, it all comes down to how soon, how how long can you prevent it from hitting landfill? That's mm. the whole for, for all of it, right? Like this this shirt or this couch or this bit of plastic. Like how long can we prevent this from, from getting into landfill? Landfill. So that's the that's like the after effect. But there's also like, can we just prevent this stuff from being made in the first place? Yeah, that's very true. Like, can we just Build things with the, you know, with the purpose of like longevity of like or lasting with, for ages, or with different materials. Yeah, or you use plastic to build stuff to, and I think that's what a lot of people are investing in as well as like finding second uses for these plastics. So like you know, turning them into furniture, turning them into Yeezys. I mentioned Yeezys. this before. I think, <laughs> not Yeezys. Other, I think jackets, Adidas. Yeah, all of the heaps of brands are doing it. But mm. yeah, like there's an argument to be made that. Cleaning up the oceans with all the plastic and stuff, like it's a too far gone now. Like there's everyone's seen the images of like kilometer spans of like all these plastics accumulating in these big heaps in the ocean. And you can attack them and start working on them or start creating these gigantic machines to sort of siphon them in and recycle them to a degree. There's, you know, probably heaps of projects with billions of dollars invested in the technology like mm-hmm. that. But it's gonna keep happening like it's the rate of like how much is getting pumped back in there versus how much is getting recycled True. and pulled out. Yeah. So it's at some point you have to just address it at the production line, the manufacturer mm-hmm. level. Like we have to stop making these. Like there's a ban now to use plastic straws and stuff, but companies can still make them. Yeah. There should be, you know, more in that effort or more encouragement encouragement or subsidies mm-hmm. for like sustainable options or alternatives like bamboo straws or Paper yeah. straws or whatever. Or like the stainless steel ones. And so, I know there was yeah. a, a worry as well because with with COVID, with all the gloves, the masks, all these single-use items, yeah, there's like a huge worry about the layover effect over the past like two years with all this ending up. And to be honest, like some of it's – most of it's probably going to end up in, in the ocean anyway, but we've got all these gloves and everything. 80% of it. Yeah. 80% of it. And I was reading as well that the majority of – um. The contribution to the ocean waste over the last, well, from like the COVID period, the, you know, the tools and resources and supplies used during COVID, mainly the face masks, mm-hmm. um, majority of the ones that are, end up being found in the water are yeah. from hos- hospital waste, like oh, yeah. way more than like personal PPE wear. Right. Because they're just using them so frequently. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's probably measures in place to, Put them in, like, I know when I was studying, there's, like, ways to handle PPE and, like, sensitive equipment like that. you got to bag it up, put it in, dispose of it in a very correct and procedural way, but there's still ways it's going to end up in the ocean, especially in the countries that are a bit more relaxed in terms of how they handle their waste and stuff. So, and i also seen that, um, like, speaking of the oceans, they found 
rubbish in the Mariana Trench, which is like, <gasps> like set, I think like four, five, maybe even like seven kilometers deep. They found um, a, a plastic bag mm-hmm. with frozen two. I Lego saw that. It. Yeah, I saw that article, and apparently, like it, like there's not much technology that actually can get that far down. Yeah. Like it's been. So, so the, many years in the making, the right? The movie was made in, I think, 2013, the Frozen 2, the animated, I guess, Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. And they found a plastic bag down there. And it's like, whatever, I think, I'm pretty sure at least like five kilometers deep. So that's how, that, that, that's what we can get to. Mm-hmm. Like, what's it going to get to when it's like super, super far down where the submarines can't get down there yet? And there's those crazy googly eye fish with the lights in their head. Yeah. And there's. And they got frozen keeping them company down there. Yeah. Like, it's not good that it can reach that far down. Like, and that's from only a few years ago. Can you imagine? Actually, I probably should have Googled this before, but like, when was, yeah, the use of plastic like widely popular, like adapted? Adopted. 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 I guess. Mm. What would have been the first? Let's, let's well, Google it. You carry on the conversation. Yeah. I'll Google it. Because the earliest instances I can sort of think of is Tupperware, but that's more of the reusable plastics. I wonder when like single use plastic sort of really came around. I have a feeling it would have to be something to do with maybe fast food, things like that. So with fast food becoming a lot more popular, that was probably one of the main reasons. Keep, 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 keep carrying on. Yeah, he's still answer. having a look. <laughs> besides, besides fast food. I don't know if there would be any other, or maybe, yeah, hospitals and things like that would have, like, single-use plastics. 1856, so, like, 1850s, so, like, 150 years, 160 years. When plastic was first invented? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does it have a thing for single-use plastic at all? Um, keep like carrying mass- on the conversation. <laughs> it's always a- I'm just trying to, because we, we're taking steps in our own lives to minimalize our impact on plastic. Obviously, we can always be better, but- when we're getting groceries, we're, you know, just putting them straight into the trolley rather than finding bags and stuff for them. And we've got metal straws. <laughs> so there's a couple of different articles here. Uh, mm-hmm. 1965, a dude um, invented the first plastic bag. There's another article that says, uh, first use plastic shopping bags first became available in the US in 1979. So let's just say you just use the second article as... Like a rough estimate? Yeah, to give it a bit of... Uh, Buffer. Yeah. So. So 1979. What's that? Uh, so let's say, let's say 1980 for for sake. So. 41 years. So it's. 40 years, and it's like okay, that was a bad idea. Probably shouldn't have done that, guys. No. 40 years, and that's how much of an impact it's had. In only 40 years. Yeah. That's- but also, there's nine billion people on the planet. Yeah, and like population keeps expanding, things like that. But for something. Fire out. I bet the dude that invented it didn't think that would happen. But, like, yeah, I guess he might have had a patent patent on how to, like, just the design with the handles maybe and then mm-hmm. or, the, like, the what it's made out of. Pretty, I guess pretty it's, like, like thinning, thin, thin, thinning it down sort of thing. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good benefits for plastic or, like, types of plastic out there that people use them for. I think people use them for, like, artificial limbs and... You know, I know airplanes, things like that, like where you can't have metal. So there's always good good use of that. But I think it's just the general single-use plastics when you can, I don't know, have better ones that, uh, you know, don't harm the environment as much. Yeah. Mm. But that's just the disposable stuff. Like what about the stuff that's like semi-permanent, like Tupperware, different types of Tupperware, you know, women's BP. I'm not going to get into the statistics and the... <laughs> The history of different plastics and their petrochemicals, but like mm-hmm. BPA and stuff like that, and it, take, it takes a while for people to discover that this shit ain't too good, mm. and yeah, usually too late, usually too late to find out. Yeah, and then you know if you if there's something new comes out and everyone's doing it, and you know there's not enough research, you caught a conspiracy theorist in these days, <laughs> as opposed to just someone who's playing, investigating and playing it out and waiting until um, all their ducks are in a row and all the facts are correct, but. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, there's a change in terms of clothing and stuff, but in the meantime, we'll keep thrifting and keep picking up all those old secondhand bangers. Yes, that's that's the best part. So, we keep stuff for ourselves, which is- I always love going out thrifting because I get to go shopping as well at the same time. Well, it's a pity it's Sunday and it's raining, so we can't do do it today. Well, considering I don't buy any new clothes for myself, it's all secondhand, so it's the only time that I can refresh and get some new new items in in the wardrobe. Speaking of refreshing, I think we'll wrap it up there mm-hmm. and refresh ourselves with another 
coffee. Ooh. Obviously, everyone needs another coffee at midday. Do you like the coffees? Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Look Mum, I'm Hustling Podcast. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or mm-hmm. iTunes, Spotify as well. And we make a video version on YouTube. Go over there, check it out, subscribe, drop a comment. And you can also find us on social media, on Twitter, Look Mum Pod, and on Instagram, Look Mum, I'm Hustling. See you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. See ya. See ya.